Hello, welcome back to the Games Kingdom. My name's Carl King. Today we're going to be having a look at an unboxing and a quick flick through of some of the rules for Perseverance Castaway Chronicles from Mind Clash Games. Now this is the recent episode one and two Kickstarter um, delivered uh, a couple of months back. It's now mid-June 2022. And so these were delivered to two backers recently. I managed to pick this up from somebody selling it at the recent UK Games Expo who had got a spare copy within their group. Um, and uh, there are now some retail copies available on the Mind Clash Games website if you're quick and uh, fancy having a delve into the world of Perseverance. So without further ado, we'll have a quick look through. As with all Mind Clash large box games like this, you get a very handy guide on how to restack the box and once you open this it gives you all the things that, and where you need to put them into each tray uh, whether it be the retail version which has got standees or the miniature version which has actual um, plastic dinosaur miniatures as well as soldier miniatures so this is the deluxe version, uh, as you will see as we go through. So we've got uh, trays of very nicely done plastic dinosaurs and soldiers and leader miniatures. So we'll leave that to one side. We get a nice little storybook that you can sit and read and gives you some sort of fluff and background about the world of Perseverance. Basically, you are part of a colonization ship that has uh, landed on a planet and you've set up your colony stroke camps and you have to protect that camp whilst growing it um, from marauding dinosaurs. So as I say we have a solo rule book and uh, we'll be getting into these a little bit later. So we have the solo rule book, we have the rule book for episode one, we have a rule book for episode two because they both use different game boards and we have the Chronicle Expansion rulebook which you then play after playing both episodes 1 and 2. Now you can um, have quite a bit of replayability with these uh, both solo and with a group because there are different uh, leader um, stroke um, board player boards and on one side all of them have zero trait stroke strengths and on the B side each individual leader has its own individual trait and strength which you can utilize throughout the game so you can play several games and sort of the whole campaign with somebody with none of those and then start and play it again uh, with somebody uh, who has a different uh, strength and or trait and then you could obviously play that with all four of the different leaders that you get in the box. You get a very nice little dice tray because it is a dice rolling game and basically you roll a set amount of dice and some neutral dice and at the start one of your own player colour for each player and then there are symbols on those dice and they need to be placed on certain symboled squares on the board as well as squares where there are no symbols which means you can place any of those dice but um, when you're playing a neutral dice that's fine if you're playing your own colour dice that's fine if you play a dice of another player's colour you lose two victory points or followers so if I say followers or victory points uh, whilst I'm doing this video uh, generally they mean the same thing so at the end of the game whoever has the most followers is the winner and it is a game where you are playing together to um, see off the marauding dinosaurs. So it's a co-op stroke um, win the game on your own type game. So sort of a semi-co-op really. Um, and then you sort of go through the game. Uh, there are three different assemblies that you play. So once the dice run out, that's the end of an, an assembly. You do that three times and at the end of the third assembly, you go through a sequence of uh, scoring and the one with the most follower stroke victory points is declared the winner. So let's have a quick look. So we've got three 
we'll move this to one side. We've got four here. These are the leaderboards and they're inset on the B side, um, which is the side with the traits on. And then on the A side, they're just flat. And these are the ones that they recommend that you play the first set of games with um, whilst you're getting used to the game and the rules uh, before trying to play them with the um, individual player powers. We've got some other smaller boards here. This is the Dino Attack Combat Reward Board. Several of these uh, will be um, covered over each different assembly and if you successfully um, repel an attack by the dinosaurs you will, depending on how many um, people you had in both uh, the defence of that particular area and where you came in that defence system, so either first, second or third, you will get to do so many rewards on this board. And as you can see, that's a single sided board. This is a double sided board and they are the dissenters. So these are the people who you use in the solo mode and there is a set of cards that come across the top here uh, three cards but only two cards are used every turn for them to play um, where it will tell you which dice they will take where it will go what they're going to do and then that third card is left there and two more come out and the one that's turned over on the top of the deck that will tell you which of those two cards gets allocated to the two solo AI players and then once you've done your actions Marek will go, then Camilla, and then it will come back to your turn. Um, this is the assembly scoring board, so there will be some cards that go on here, and each time the assembly scoring is done at the end of each round, these will move down, and then you'll be left with a single one at the end, and then once you've done that third one, you do the end game scoring. And then, obviously, there is one there if you're playing a two-player game. That is a three to four player side. Uh, this is another one of the boards and I believe this is for either uh, episode two or the Chronicle expansion. Now, when I say during this video, which I probably will several times, that I'm not quite sure what that's for or what this does, it's because it tells you and recommends that you do not look past either the solo mode or episode one um, to see what happens in episodes two and the Chronicle expansion so that you don't sort of um, spoil the changes in the game for you and all the other players. So it's not that I've not read through things, it's because it tells you not to. Um, this, uh, These are the actual, some other boards, um, which I believe come into um, maybe um, again either the expansion or the uh, episode 2. I've seen some videos online of episode 1 and these boards weren't used. As you can see there's some nice artwork on the back of these as well which is basically the leader artwork uh, in the encampments and then you've got some nice again recessed boards here for uh, different tokens and um, things to go into as you're playing through the game. We'll have a look at the game board later, as well as the rules. And then we'll get into, these are some pads which again are uh, used um, during, I believe, episode two. You get some turn sequence, uh, reference cards, final scoring, dino combat, uh, assembly. So this will, these cards will uh, be given to each player and it will just basically tell them how the turn sequence works, what you do, uh, if you need to miss any steps because a certain thing has or hasn't happened and as I say on the back you've got um, other parts of the sort of game and turn sequencing including as I say things like final scoring so they're quite handy each player will get some of those as part of their sort of starting equipment these are some of the models and they are exceptionally nice. These are the Raptors, so we'll try and get one of these out. So they're quite nice, small, fierce 
raptors. As if, if you've watched any of the Jurassic Park films, you'll know that they are quite ferocious meat eaters, and you get quite a few of those. And then also in the game, because this is a deluxe version, they also, just in case you prefer to use them, they give you the standees, and you get all of the standee uh, plastic bottoms to be able to uh, use those. These are some of the card decks that you'll be using. These boards here are used by each player and they will track, as you can see they've got the uh, leader names on them, and basically they track your followers stroke victory points and you all start with 10. You can go sort of up and down on those and let's say the one with the uh, most followers stroke victory points at the end is declared the winner. Uh, this other board stroke dial system here is used in the solo mode. Then we have here, these are the neutral dice, so they're all white, and as you can see they've got different symbols on from loud hailers, hammers, backpacks, books, and they've all got the same symbols on. You roll those depending on how many players are in the game, you get a set amount of those, along with one of each of the player colour dice to start with and that's the pool of dice that you pick from and when it's your go you pick one of those up and you place it and you take a certain amount of actions. This is a standard large d6 which is used to uh, roll and determine whether any of your soldiers die on certain uh, turns within the game um, when you're playing things like patrols and some of these cards here I believe are for the episode 2 stroke expansion so again won't go into those too much because I don't want to spoil it either for myself or others. Um, various little components in the trays, little uh, tokens. These are achievement cards which I again believe come into play not in episode 1 so as you progress through playing different parts of the game Again, more standee figures here, sort of sitting in the bottom of trays, and more cards, which again, I believe some of these are for the um, solo, because I've seen these come out on the videos. So these are the cards that I mentioned earlier, and it will tell you which of the dice across here that they want to take away from the pool, and then it will say where, uh, on the card, it will tell you where to place those out on the board, and what action the uh, AI player at that particular point what action and space they want to take up on the board so that means that obviously you cannot then go there so we'll be delving more into that as things go along and start to play the solo mode we've got another couple of trays here of dinosaur figures so these are the tramplers a bit more chunky but again very nice plastic miniatures so I'm going to uh, hopefully paint these up give them a, an undercoat and then use some um, speed painter army painter speed paint paints or GW contrast paints on these just to give them a little bit of a once over and again you get the standees in this as well as part of the deluxe version and here we have some more of those uh, but slightly different um, stance or um, pose for want of a better phrase. So as I say that some of these might also be um, some different dinosaurs that might come into play as I say for the different expansion stroke games as you go through. So now we come on to player trays and there are four, yeah, four different colours. Every tray is exactly the same so we'll we'll have a look at one so again as this is a deluxe version you've got what they call a light soldier and a heavy soldier and these poses are the same as you will see on the cards and the standees and you will use these they will go out on the board to defend the areas and also to go out on patrol um, and win you rewards and uh, some of these may die if uh, a light or a heavy soldier fights a raptor they will instantly die leaders never died it doesn't matter how many 
uh, or which dinosaur they fight. Uh, light soldiers can kill one dinosaur, heavy soldiers can kill two, um, but they will both die if one of those two is a raptor. Then they will go uh, into your supply again. If they aren't killed, they go back onto your player board. We've got some of the coloured player dice. So again, they have the same symbols as the neutral dice. You start with one of these in the pool and you can then pay resources as a particular action to put more of your dice into the pool and take away the neutral dice. I don't believe you can take away your opponent's coloured dice but you certainly can swap out the neutral dice and the thing with that is that if you take away a neutral hammer you put down a red hammer and then obviously the more of the player dice that are out if your opponents pick those up as I say they lose victory points for having to use your dice they can't pass if there's dice there they have to take a dice these little cubes will go on certain uh, cards throughout the game to donate your presence in that particular area these metal um, shields will also donate how many of a particular resource you've got and they will sit nicely in those recessed areas on side B of the player boards and then on those larger boards but will just sit on top of player board A these small little pyramid type biodomes are your settlements and they will go out on the board and they will give you board presence and at the end of every assembly for each area you will work out what the board presence is you will get so many votes for doing that and then the one with the most votes will get again victory point stroke followers based on whether they're first second or third on the amount of votes that they have in that particular area and then there are also walls which you can put out and those walls will help also to block dinosaur attacks and then we also have as a last um, sort of deterrent as you can see here these are two raptors these are traps you put them out face down on a free space on the area that I'll show you later where the dinosaurs come in and if the dinosaur comes out and goes on there and it is the right dinosaur you've got a better chance of that trap working but even if it is the wrong symbol for the wrong dinosaur you can still um, you roll a dice and if you get a certain result on that dice oh, excuse me you will then stop and kill that dinosaur and it means that potentially one of your soldiers does not have to kill it and potentially die in the process if it is a raptor if you kill the raptor using a trap or block it by using the wall then obviously the soldier doesn't need to kill it and it then doesn't need to die itself i've got a couple more trays to show you here some of these i believe are to do with as I say, the later games stroke expansion. So we've got four um, miniatures here, which I believe could be leader miniatures. I haven't seen leader miniatures in there, but I haven't dug those out um, so far. So these could be the leader miniatures. But then we've got other bits and pieces in there, which look as though it is part of, as I say, the later expansions. And then again, we've got another four miniatures in this box and we've got some smaller things here and as you can see they say sustenance military expansion and protection these go over certain areas of the board where the dinosaurs come in and these ones of a which have all got the same names on go over areas where you can place your uh, biodomes your uh, settlements and once a dino attack has happened whether it's successfully breached or not um, then these are removed the area becomes dangerous and there are more dinosaurs that can go down the next time so there's more to kill which makes it harder so these dice here this white dice with dinosaurs on is rolled when the area is not a dangerous area and the yellow one is rolled once it is revealed as being a dangerous area and there are more dinosaurs on here so for example if you roll that and that face comes up you would put down a raptor a trampler and then a raptor in three spaces 
on that particular area that the dice was rolled for and these two dice one is for the walls one is for the traps he rolled it and depending on what the symbols say it will either work or not and then you get some rewards like followers and other bits and pieces depending on obviously the roll um, result these are cards that go at the bottom of the player board and basically that's where your cubes go as part of your secondary actions you can place your cubes on here and once they're all those four squares are full you take them off players get rewards at the bottom of the card depending on whether they have a majority or an equal share of the most cubes on there they're left on there but those spaces are then empty and they can be refilled again and can be uh, the rewards can be won a second and or more time so that's a quick look through all of the trays in the game and what they hold so let's have a quick look this is the player board for the episode 2 game so as you can see this is the four player board because it says so in the corner there are tiles that will come out here which are in some of those trays but I said I didn't want to take those out because that would spoil um, seeing what they are and these squares here are where your dice go when you take them and you place them so if they're empty you can put any face die if it's the loud hailer the loud hailer dice face has to be the same um, and these also you can change once they've been played if you pay the resources and go to a certain area that's where you can change the colour to your own and you could change a dice that's already been played because also dice colour in a set area so military zone sustenance expansion and construction at the end of each assembly as I said you will go through and see who has the most presence and dice at that point help you with your board presence as well as um, things like the uh, settlements which go on these little things here and when you place them you can also take them you don't have to go up or down in order you can place them on any of these but they will get uh, a reward based on what is shown in that box obviously the closer they are to the top the more chance they have of being trampled by marauding dinosaurs because any that breach through that are a trampler they will start taking settlements out starting from whatever one is closest so if you've got one here that will come out and the next one's down here if there's another one that will come out and if that's the end and there's any left here they they are okay they're not trampled so you just have to be careful where you're placing them but obviously the higher you go the better rewards there are because there is more risk of being uh, destroyed and obviously ruining your presence in that area now this is the board i'm going to show you the board for two to three players for episode one so this is what we have here so the dinosaurs come out and are placed here the traps go on these um, triangular symbols also here but only if there isn't a dinosaur you can't put a trap under a dinosaur that is already being placed on the board and it has to go on an empty one and hope that the dinosaur that comes out by placing the dice and or rolling the dice is placed here that is the correct one so you won't know that until a attack is done and the attack will only happen when these are full these bottom rows here are the ones that are covered initially so for each of these zones once you've got five dinosaurs in that's when the attack will happen but they could happen this one could have five in and the others have none the attack will happen here that will become dangerous and the other three will remain as not dangerous and then they could become uh, full later but it happens at the end of the player's turn who put the last dinosaur in not at the end of the assembly and as I say it happens at that point straight away and then once everything's done all the dinosaurs come off you reveal this and you reveal the card here and that allows more settlement areas to be put down with greater rewards but also greater risks because these as I say go from top to bottom if any tramplers come through they will get destroyed and take away your board presence you don't lose the rewards that you got earlier in the game but you do lose those uh, board presence um, tokens <laughs> so 
that's what happens there. These circles are where your soldiers can be placed and again when you place them on these different symbols if you place them on here you'll get one resource of that or if you place it here you'll get a resource of that. Now if there are two soldiers here this soldier will kill whatever the first dinosaur is here and the back one if there is one will kill the top one. If there is a just a single person here and two dinosaurs here if it's only a light soldier it's only going to kill one of those so that means one of these dinosaurs will breach because you have to get rid of all of the dinosaurs um, at the end of the combat phase for there not to be a breach <coughs> and if you've got a heavy soldier that will kill two dinosaurs but as I said earlier if one of those dinosaurs is a raptor that soldier that attacked or fought the raptor will die if it's a leader the leader will stay up whether or not there is a dinosaur left and or a breach happens and that leader will come back to your board <coughs> so that's how your soldiers work across here these three spaces in each of these areas are where the walls go and again you go uh, into certain areas on the protection uh, area certain dice placements and you can take two actions one of which you could put a trap down you could put a wall down and if you pay some extra resources you can put two walls out and they don't have to go into the protection area they can go into any of these areas the same with traps you could go here and put a trap here and a wall there if that's what you wanted to do or you could put two walls or a trap and a wall um, it just depends on what actions you decide to take and if you want to pay any resources to take extra actions and those are cast as your primary actions so you get a certain number of actions depending on which areas you go so in training you get three politics you get one fortification you get two and then here you get to go and uh, take a patrol card or you get rations or you can go to the pub <laughs> so each of these actions will give you different things but they will all put dinosaurs out onto the board uh, depending on where you go so if you go into this area here one of these three spaces are the only spaces you can go to get a patrol card these spaces will give you rations but they will also put dinosaurs into this area Dinosaurs from here will go here, here into there, and there into there. So it is fairly uh, easy to understand. The symbols tell you which ones to put out, and you put them out in order if there's more than one showing. So here a trampler would go, then a raptor. Here it would be a trampler, and you will roll a dice. And if the um, thing has not um, been attacked once already, you roll the white dice, and the result puts extra dinosaurs out. And if it has and it's dangerous, then you roll the yellow dice and those ones come out. Once it's full, you can't put any others. So if there was only one space left and two dinosaurs came out, you could only put one, but it would be whatever the one is at the top of the dice. You don't get to pick the easier one if the easier one is the second. So that's your player um, sort of areas that you can go on to to play your actions. And it, as I say, it looks complicated. But if you watch a playthrough video, and I'm going to try and do a solo one myself, if you watch one of these online, there's been several done already. Once you've seen a few goes, not turns, but a few goes where people have taken dice and placed them and taken their actions, um, it's, it's quite easy to pick up. So what we'll do, we'll have a quick flick through the books. And we'll start with the solo book. So obviously this is the one that I'll be looking at first. It tells you obviously what you need. It tells you how to set up the dissenters, which is the solo AI. As I said, that's that board where you've got cards and then you've got a, a, a dial that you would normally use and then the other dial that I showed you, which is used in the solo mode only, and that is um, you have to score a certain amount of points depending on the level of difficulty you choose. If you do that by the end of the third assembly, then you win. However, if, they, if the dinosaurs destroy five of any settlements on the board you instantly lose so you have to be careful about dinosaur breaches even in the solo game so it tells you how to set up um, episode one that's the board as I say so you've got it shows you obviously with standees here how they are placed out onto the board you can see a game already sort of in progress so you can see that some of the areas are 
filling up and some of them have got dice on. Uh, it will give you examples of resolving dino attacks and then the assembly and the end game and then it comes on to rules specific to episode 2 shows you that other board that I showed you earlier so you, again you, you played on the 2-3 player board for the solo mode and you sort of just work your way through both of them and then you can play both episodes as a solo player and then I will show you quickly the other books even though I'm not going to be taking in too much of these um, so you've got your episode one again same board so this is a four player setup as you can see there are the cards down the bottom the dinosaurs and things have all been laid out these are the boards the reward boards and the assembly boards the patrol cards so everything's laid out nicely you can see there that the player the red player has got all of their um, components that they may need during the game there's plenty of um, soldiers than you will probably ever need um, so you won't run out but obviously in a deluxe version you've got miniatures and standees which you could use if you ever need them but I don't think you will so as again you go through episode one and it comes into obviously there's some optional rules that you can play again so you can play it once go back throw in some new bits and pieces this is the rule book for episode two so it clearly states play after episode one again four player board set up so slightly different to one because there are tiles that come out rather than just putting things on certain spaces so uh, I've not watched a video for it either because again I don't want to spoil it until after I've played episode one and then potentially sort of get does this happen in episode one or does it happen in episode two and then you've got the expansion which has got all of those cards that I showed you in some of the trays earlier and they obviously will sit in there for some time before we can get to that because obviously I want to try and play through one and two first but obviously um, I want to be able to play them and score enough points to say now I can move on so I'm going to keep playing solo until I beat episode one and then I'll move on to episode two and hopefully if it takes two or three games to do that it gives you a better idea of playing the game anyway and you'll get quicker at picking dice putting them down knowing what the actions are what to take and it will become a, a much faster game as I say it looks quite involved as did Anachrony which is also by Mind Clash but once you start again with Anachrony looks baffling rule book looks really intimidating have a look online watch some videos you'll see that it's not as intimidating as it first seems so again this is perseverance episodes one and two three and four i believe are going to kickstarter at some point in 2023 so hopefully if i like this then um, i'll hopefully jump on board with those and get those at a later date there might be new models coming out i assume there might be different dinosaurs whether it's on the same planet or whether it's a different thing altogether uh, whether there'll be new boards we'll have to wait and see um, but as I said you can pick this up in retail now either from MyClash and I think some uh, retail outlets gaming outlets have got a few copies um, but certainly MyClash are selling them on their website currently don't know if they've sold out but have a look Perseverance Castaway Chronicles episodes 1 and 2 so until we get to another one of these bye for now